So normally we're all worried because it's an inverted yield curve, but the catastrophe only starts when it becomes positive again. Every time it goes back above zero, then we have a big recession. And the cycle shows that later this year, we should have a recession coming. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Silver Bullion Television, SBTV. I'm your host, Patrick Vieira. Dr. Charles Nenner joins us today. Dr. Nenner was named one of the legendary technical analysts by Forbes, and his unique system based on cycles was successfully used by Goldman Sachs for several years. Dr. Nenner joined Goldman Sachs in New York and London, where he served as head of market timing on Goldman's proprietary trading desk before opening his research firm in 2001 the Charles Nenner Research Center, where Dr. Nenner is the founder and CEO. And we're delighted to have Dr. Charles Nenner join us once again today. It's time to saddle up and silver up for Charles Nenner. Dr. Nenner, welcome back to SBTV. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. It's a lot going on, so we have a lot of things to discuss. Yes, absolutely. Glad to have you back. I want to First, start with the Fed and the rate cycle that they are in. We're already at 4.75 to 5% on the effective funds rate. How much higher are we going or how much longer are we going with rate heights? Well, as you know, I do the cycle work and my cycle show that they can continue higher until late next year. And I think they could go as high as 6%. Uh, I don't think the Fed is telling us the whole story what's going on. They talk a little bit about uh, unemployment, about inflation, but there are much more things going on, like uh, uh, an outflow of uh, of billions and billions of dollars from the United States, and all the taxpayer money going to Ukraine. And they're not political, so they're not supposed to talk about it. So they keep us busy with talking a little bit. Well unemployment like this, unemployment like that, but actually that's on the side that's not so important. It's a very difficult situation in the world right now. And I'm very worried about uh, the dollar. And I'm very worried about the safety of my subscribers. So you're you're of the belief that the Fed is not entirely on the up and up with all of us? No, no, they just, they just talk around it. But uh, we, we, if we look at the Fed funds, we know they're going higher. And we know that my cycles show that uh, in one, well, one and a half months, maybe two months, inflation starts picking up. You know, things go in, in waves. So we had the first wave of inflation going up. And then, uh, you know, it, it, it makes a plateau and then it goes up again. So we're not out of the woods yet. Okay. And with this inflation, do you think that we're actually going to get back to that? Uh... Two percent inflation rate that the Fed says that they're they're gonna they have the belief that they'll be able to to take us back to. Well, I would say you younger than me, but I would say not in our lifetime. It's not gonna happen. There is a I showed that there is a thirty year cycle that bottomed a year two years ago, and that's why we had almost zero uh, interest rates, and then now it's up for the next thirty years. So now it doesn't go up directly for thirty years. But it will go back to the high of the 80s, which was like 16 to 18 percent on the long bond. Okay, yeah, surely that that's going to affect the bonds. But uh, with the bonds, in your view, is it that safe haven that it once was? Well, the interesting thing is there is a, 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 an important low finally uh, on the long bond in June. Uh, but there is an outflow of uh, of dollars. And if the Chinese or other countries really get their brick thing going, they're going to sell the bonds, which makes interest rates go up. The, the, the thing is that the cycles look good from June off, which I say, well, maybe we're going to have a very bad situation in the world and people still going to, going to try and, and, and rescue themselves from buying U.S. bonds. Uh, because I don't see any reason why the U.S. bond should go up, but the cycle shows the bottoming uh, in June, and we always go with the cycles because uh, I can't beat that system. So bonds are, are, are going down one more time, but they're close to a long-term bottom. It looks like more unrealized losses in bonds with 
where they could potentially become realized losses where we may see more banks or corporations going underwater? Well, you should know that I just discussed it with some people in my firm that that the European uh, uh, banks are much worse than the American banks because the European banks bought German boons, Dutch bonds, whatever, with a zero uh, rate or minus half a rate. And I never understood why they did that. Uh, I understand that the, uh, the politics says you have to be safe, so buy bonds, but what if you get a return of zero uh, or minus a half a percent? So they're going to have huge losses, of course, because interest rates go up. We don't hear much about it, but you have the same story as the bank that got in trouble now uh, in, in the United States because they were on the wrong side of the bond market. But if you have bonds that had negative uh, interest, so the losses are much bigger than in the United States. So I think European banks are much more vulnerable than the American banks. Although the American banks are also vulnerable. Perhaps this is uh, some of what we're seeing with France and, and the raising of the, the, uh, the age before you can collect pensions. I can, because what happens is, uh, uh, well, that also has to do with the, uh, the older uh, people be got, uh, getting older and have less children. <clears throat> so the less children to, uh, to provide for the pensions, but the people live longer, so they have to pay them out longer. So even without nothing going wrong in the economy, they still would have the problem. Where, in your opinion, are we at in the business cycle? Well, I can tell you exactly where we are because I sent out uh, Sunday charts and it showed the uh, inversion of the yield curve. So the inversion of the yield curve is the difference between a 10-year yield and a 2-year yield. And when it becomes negative, you have problems. Now, since 1970, every time that it happened, you got the recession. But the interest or depression, or the question is, an interesting point is people don't seem to know that. When did that recession start? That recession starts when the difference becomes positive again. So normally you would say, well, you know, we're all worried because it's an inverted yield curve. That's bad for the economy. But the catastrophe only starts when it becomes positive again. And that has a 100% correlation since 1970. Every time it goes back above zero, then you have a big recession. Now, the interesting thing is we're far from zero, but we, just, we start picking up a little bit. So I did a cycle. As you know, I did a cycle. So I wanted to know when are we going to go above zero again? And that's going to be later in 2023. So the recession is not because you got an inverted yield curve. That's what most analysts will tell you, but they don't look at the facts. You got the recession once we go back to zero, probably because uh, uh, a weak economy brings it back to zero or above zero. And the cycle shows that is going to happen uh, later this year. So later this year, if the 100% correlation continues, we should have a recession coming. Okay, so I guess going a little bit forward, your outlook for 2024 may not be a very a very happy one. Well, I tell you, a part of that why it's not a very happy one, because uh, as you probably know, is that the idea in the United States is that the sitting president is always being reelected when there's a war. And we know, for instance, you're close to China. We know, for instance, that everybody knew that Taiwan was a part of China, but nobody spoke about it. But since Biden opened his mouth, says, we're going to defend Taiwan. So now Xi is embarrassed. He has to do something. And we have this problem with Russia. And we could have a problem with North Korea and South Korea. We have a problem with Iran. And the more wars the United States creates, the more chances Biden has to be reelected. Now, I just mentioned also, because I had a whole meeting about this today, is that in the last 20, 30 years, the United States has not won one war. They just go to war and they lose every war. It's a very strange, strange situation. And as you know now, we have the BRIC countries that make like a contra dollar, right? And um, I look, for instance, at, at the real in Brazil, because we've got big clients in cotton in, 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 in reals. And the real is very, very strong, which should not happen because... Lula is not president, and he is like uh, almost a communist or socialist, and it's very bad for the country. But because Brazilian becomes part of the big countries, right, 
and even the woman who was once president in in brazil is now the head of the of the brick bank so that's why the brazilian real is very strong so there's a lot going on and it all looks very bad for the united states it looks very bad for the dollar and uh, it starts to be a, a war economy that's the only thing that keeps the united states economy going because it's a war economy and they hope that if there's going to be an agreement once then they can bring in like they did after the second world where they can bring in their uh, their, their corporations and they will make billions because they're going to rebuild uh, ukraine so we've been manipulated on all sides and i tell the politicians that i speak to in europe don't run after the united states because you have no idea what you're doing so i just a long answer of what i think about 2024 i'm worried about a big war explosion also based on the fact maybe you know that i do war cycles and i said you know this nothing's going to happen till the second half of 23 well not much is going to happen it's the same status quo as uh, before between ukraine and russia but soon another cycle is going to pick up and uh, it's going to be big trouble if you're enjoying this interview with Dr. Charles Nenner and I, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. And if you would like to learn more about systemic wealth protection, please do visit us at www.silverbullion.com. Last time we spoke some nine months ago, we, we did touch on this war cycle. And, and at that time, the Ukraine war was, it was happening. And now we are hearing, of course, about Taiwan. And things are definitely heating up here. We're potentially war could be on on the the horizon so i wanted to ask you about about your war cycle is it really starting to to heat up now well as i said then i don't remember is that uh, there's always in the second decade of a new century and it's interesting for people who want to watch that the different cycles but the major cycle war cycle starts the second decade of new century so that's now in 2020 and a couple of years before if you go 100 years before it's two th it's 1918 the first world war if you go 100 years before it's 1818 it's napoleon and if you google major wars around the new century you you get the cycle up for a thousand years so don't ask me how it works most of my work is it it it, it functions the computer calculates it and exactly how it is possible we still don't know so why there's always a war in the second decade of a new century we don't know but that's going on again and it's going to be up for a while and the more cycles and more cycles and uh, i you know i got people who subscribe with me now not talking about natural gas or crude oil says what is the best place to go that's what we're dealing with uh, i have a lot of subscribers who uh, uh, put uh, their money in gold and put it in a, in a locker in switzerland and they just try to survive the funny thing is, if you listen to the media of the United States, it says, how are we going to make money today? And the big guy says, how are we not going to lose money today? So, you know, it's, it's, it's a long-term view you need. And um, if they may, if we made the, the dollar digital because the dollar go, goes under, then it's even being more and more extreme. And so uh, uh, we're in for a hard time. And the best thing is to learn from history because uh, as you know i'm dutch and the dutch were in charge in the 1700s they were the, the big power and they went under and then it was england and they went under we also had spain and portugal they went under and united states is now the next one to go under because they show the same symptoms as all these countries who were leading the world that were going under i'll back up a bit with with the u.s and uh de-dollarization how how close are we to, to this actually happening where, where the dollar really just is not the world's reserve currency anymore? Well, that's a good question. But as you know, is we, we have this program that shows you when it's going to happen and what's going to happen at what level. So we know the dollar is in a downtrend. Uh, we could have a small bounce for a week or so, but that's not it. So it, it's going down for a longer time period. That's why the Swiss franc is doing very well. Uh, even like I said, Brazil uh, uh, Real is doing very well. It's very hard to know which currency you want you go want to go into, because people ask me about the yuan, but I don't know if that's really tradable, how it works. So I, I still have to look into that. So uh, I can tell you if the dollar goes down, how many years it goes down, 
and how low it goes down, that's my work. Uh, but that's for people who work my who watch my work with when I was with Goldman Sachs for many years, and they got used to the fact is that we don't know exactly why things happen. We don't care. We just want to know what's going to happen, and that's my work. So I can tell you what's going to happen, and when they're going to give up on the reserve currency. Listen, uh, Nixon decided to decouple from the gold, and then Kissinger went to Saudi Arabia. And says, can we price then the oil in dollars? And we use it still as reserve. And now uh, uh, Saudi Arabia wants to be part of the anti-dollar group. And soon they're going to say, we're not going to price in dollars anymore. So the, the fundamentals are there. And we did the time. We've been out of the dollar rate for a long time. And into the Swiss franc, actually, for a long time. And we'll let the cycles do the work. Uh, again, if people want to see it, uh, if you go to charlesmenner.com, you can get 30, 30 days free, as you know. Uh, you can see the research four times a week, and you can see how we do it. And especially in this time, it's very interesting and, and important to see what's going on. And I always urge people, try to have a different mindset. Don't care why it's happened. Just care what's happening. And as an example, I gave the idea about the Black Swan Theory, which you probably know. There was the guy who wrote the book about Black Swan Theory, and it says there's certain things that happen, and we cannot predict them. So we're kind of a victim. And I tell the big institutions, stop trying to figure out why it happens. You want to know when it happens. But it's a mindset that people don't have. They still want to know why it happens, and they miss the point when it's going to happen. So the important thing with our work is when it's going to happen, what's going to happen, and I leave it up to, to the pundits to explain why it's going to happen. So when it happens, this um, this anti uh, anti US. It started already. It, it started already. It started already. We're in the middle of, of I would say we're in the middle of World World War Three without knowing it because we got on one side. I would say we got Iran, North Korea, China, and Russia against the West. Now, the West is not much because uh, even Germany almost doesn't have an army anymore. So it's only United States. But United States is busy deciding who was who is going to use which bathroom. If you use the wrong bathroom, you're out of the military. So so this is what they're relying on. They have no clue what's going on at the moment. What what is it going to be like really when this this de-dollarization takes full effect, when oil is is really no longer priced in, in U.S. dollars, and, and even U.S. allies perhaps start to move away from the dollar? Well, short term, <clears throat> you can have a bounce, <clears throat> excuse me, in the, in the equity markets because they say, oh, we're going to export a lot because the dollar is low. But this is this a, fool of, a, a fool's rally. Uh, the best thing is to watch, uh, for instance, we did very well with, the, we talked about that the, the bull market in gold and silver is going to continue, and we timed that. We took profit a couple of days ago because the cycle is down. The best thing is to watch when the cycle goes up and really invest something in, in, in the gold and silver um, in what way soever. And uh, be careful with stocks still because uh, it's not as, as, as good as it seems. Dr. Nenner, the, the volatility that we're seeing with, with gold and silver right now, is this all part of, of the dollar losing favor? Well, there is something called, uh, uh, there's something called also an uh, 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 S&P against gold ratio. And that means is you, don't, you don't value the S&P in dollars, but in gold. And if you follow that ratio and you follow, uh, you follow the gold price and the cycle, then you know why things are happening the way they are. Uh, the bull market is going to continue, but the more cycles are still have to bottom. So we took profits at exactly at uh, uh, 2076 on August gold, and we're standing aside waiting for the next cycle to bottom. So how does that work? That works is for one reason or the other, at a certain moment, people come to a realization, we want to buy gold. It doesn't mean there's a news item. They just come to that realization, can be based on the news of half a year ago, they just didn't think about it. The cycle is a reflection of the mass psychology, and at a certain moment, everybody thinks, oh, maybe we should buy gold. And what the system does is, it just knows in advance when that realization comes. 
and as long as that realization doesn't come, there could be a good reason to buy gold, but it doesn't happen. Let's just say for the average Joe who, who may not really know, let's say, economics all that well, but but he is seeing and hearing that the gold price, the silver price has been going up. Is this a sign for, for even the average person who may not know economics that that something really is going on that, that they should uh, take some sort of shelter with? No, but he hears that after gold and silver went up. If you take a look at the announcement, let's go in gold and silver, it comes at the top. And it's partly a crooked game because the people who buy low want to sell it to the amateurs, to the people that don't know. So now they go to the media and it's all buy gold and silver, gold and silver. So now every small investor buys gold and silver and they sell it. It's always the other way around. And I tried for years to explain it to people. Yeah, they have an incentive to say what they say. Don't listen to them. It's exactly the other way around. If you listen to the media, it says, is this a buying opportunity? Did you ever hear somebody say, is it a selling opportunity? Never. Because, because the people that they bring in have hedge funds, have companies, have brokerage firms, and they want you to buy. Otherwise, they don't make money. So it's always a buying opportunity. And, and, and it's very hard to explain to people who are not knowledgeable that they forcibly want you to be on the wrong side. So when they say it's time to buy gold and silver, they did already. With this, this volatility that, that we're seeing, uh, do you see cycles for gold and silver, perhaps one of these cycles being new all-time highs for both metals? Yes, they make all-time highs, but it's going to take a couple of years. The longer term cycle is up till 2027. But so now I have to I have to say a caveat because what happens is, and I don't want it to happen again. If people listen to me now and they don't watch my research for a couple of weeks, they say, well, gold is at 2050. Let me buy it longer term. We all say that. But mentally, there is no longer term because now it goes to 2000. Well, I'm there for the longer term, right? It goes to 1900. At 1800, everybody's in a crisis and there's no longer term anymore. They all sell with a big loss. And at that moment, cycles bottom and it starts going up, but now everybody's too afraid to buy it. So that's I'm always careful if I say something's going up longer term because you say I'm there longer term, but if you lose enough, you're going to give up on longer term and you're going to take your losses. So this thing has to be timed in order not, you know, to do the right thing. With gold and silver, do you think it has any chance of, of being being uh, some sort of a, a backing or have a, a monetary role to play in the future? Well, if they, I calculated, if they ever want to go back to the gold standard, gold right now should be about $30,000. And again, I hesitate because people might gamble it's going to happen, it's not going to happen. Uh, the main thing in 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 in, in having a nice rate return is doing the right thing most of the time. And in order to do the right thing, you have to know how to def make definition of, like you said, Netflix. How does a person how to buy net Netflix or not? I ask people, how do you make the decision? Well, you listen to somebody on the radio, on the television. Netflix had the good number. Well, the insiders knew that already before, so they're going to sell. And you're going to be stuck with Netflix. So it's it's a, such a crooked game. Now we, as a research firm, I don't care if the market goes up and down because we didn't make, don't make more money. We don't sell you any stocks. So we can be honest. But brokerage firms, they only make money if they get you into the market. So they're not going to tell you stay out of the market because then they have to fire people. Bonuses go down. And, uh, you know, they have to close the business. You really, The people really should understand what's going on. So let's say uh, people who are watching this or are maybe um, people who are, are subscribers of yours, what in your view is the most important attribute of gold uh, that, that it offers? I mean, is it is it a hedge or is it a sort of an insurance or is it because it's a, it's a liquid neutral reserve asset that, that most central banks will, will want to carry? 
Well, first of all, most central banks are accumulating gold. And as you, as you maybe know, a couple of years ago, the country Western Europe asked back the gold from, from the United States. It was stored in the United States. It don't even trust the United States with the gold. Now, Mr. Buffett, who is above everybody, says gold is nothing. It's like a hole in the ground, and that's it. So there are the very insiders, again, that will look at the cycle of the uh, S&P uh, price in gold, and then they know if gold is cheap or gold is not cheap. But that's only for investors who are really knowledgeable. So there are a lot of reasons why gold goes up or not, uh, which is beyond the scope of, 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 of people who are not professionals. You cannot know that. And again, if you listen to the people who say buy it, it's always after it goes up. There's very few people who hit it at the bottom. So you have to look at the cycles. And when our cycles say now you buy it, even the system says at what price you buy it and how high it goes, then you have a system and why it goes up i can't take responsibility for that there could be many reasons okay so gold and silver right now uh, especially with what's going on and heading into 2024 it's something that we should take a look at probably within 30 days you find the low again and it's at 30 days you get the research for free and even if you don't like the research at least you know how the professionals approach markets in a way that you have could dream of because nobody ever told you. Okay, uh, Dr. Charles Netterby, before we wrap up, can you tell us about Charles Netter Research Center? Well, I hope, you know, I hope I don't get people depressed. So Charles Netter Research Center was built on the programs I did for Goldman Sachs. We invested the own money of Goldman Sachs with it until Obama said in the crisis of 2007, uh, it's too dangerous. We were making like 40, 45 percent on billions and billions of dollars. But he, OK, so we closed down and then we started with some partners because a lot of partners left Charles Nenner Research Center and they started the hedge funds. And I'm the only one, the only owner of Charles Nenner Research Center. And it continues with the system that I did build. Which gives you the timing and the price. So it, it, it proves that things don't move at random. We can tell you in advance. Give you an example. When um, they asked me, is, is, uh, is Russia going into Ukraine? I looked at the wheat price and I saw the cycle and the wheat price goes through the roof. So I guess Russia is going to invade Russia, uh, going to invade. Now, most people will think the other way around. Russia is going to invade Ukraine and that's why the wheat price goes up. But what if you know the wheat price goes up, you know that Russia is going to, going to invade uh, Ukraine. So you have to think the other way around. So the systems tells you when things are going to happen and at what level is going to happen, tells you what level is going to top and at what price target is going to top. So now you have a system, you don't have to listen to anybody on television, you don't have to follow the news, don't read the newspapers. It's a mathematical system that has been proven for the last 30 years and that all big investors follow. And even if you don't want to subscribe, take a look for, for free for 30 days. 30 days is charlesnanner.com. Right, appreciate that, uh, Charles. I mean, uh, you brought up something pretty interesting when you said you you looked at the wheat price and and will Russia invade Ukraine? I, I want to stretch it a little bit and then ask you about oil. What are your cycles saying about oil? Well, oil is going. Uh, it takes a while, but it will go much higher, which is interesting because let's make it political again. Is Russia continue the war or not? Well, it depends on the oil price, right? Because Mr. Putin has to uh, finance his army. So if the oil price would go down to 20 as a problem, it goes to 120, he can continue. So all these things come together. You have to combine politics and, and, and war cycles with what happens in the financial markets. Uh, I looked at, uh, uh, before the invasion, I looked at some Russian stocks on Wall Street that haven't been traded since then and they showed me they're going to zero before the invasion now that that's amazing how did the computer know that don't ask me i don't know i'm just happy the computer knows that i give you one last example of how it works let's say you own ibm and ibm is 100 dollars, and ibm goes to 150 dollars. you made a nice profit right now ibm comes out tomorrow with a great number what is ibm going to do well it can go up and go go down well, you probably will say it goes up. 
If it goes up, the Wall Street Journal will write IBM has great numbers, so people pour it in to buy IBM. But now the cycle shows IBM has to come down, so have a problem because IBM has great numbers, but the stock has to come down. It goes down, and what does the Wall Street Journal say? Investors don't think IBM can do better next year, so they took profit. Which means is that even if you know the facts, you don't know what the stock is going to do. And that's what we explain on our website, you know, how to approach these things. So you don't know the facts, but even if you don't, have, don't know the facts, you don't know what the interpretation of the facts are. It's really getting a lot difficult nowadays when we watch uh, financial news media and, and somehow things just, just really are not making sense. And you don't really ever hear them say exactly as you mentioned, uh, it's a good time to sell gold or you, you just don't hear these things. And rarely would they even mention gold. And I mean, a lot of people are curious why why don't they even mention precious metals? Well, there's a, there's a, 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 a Time Magazine trick that for the last 30, 40 years when Time Magazine says the market is going sky high, that's always the end of the market. And not always on purpose. People just don't pay attention. They pay attention after gold goes up a couple of hundred dollars. Oh, let's watch gold. But then it's too late. And then the insider says, hey, now we have a market. We have some public that buys gold because otherwise they cannot sell the gold. Somebody has to take it out of their hands. I tried to explain that when we went to zero stocks in the uh, end of 2000, what was it, 21, I think. I tried to explain that people who bought in 2007, 2008, when the world seemed to go under, knew something. They were not idiots. And those are the, the people who are selling now. But the people at 2007 sold and they're buying now. So it's always the insiders against a small investor. So as long as the investor doesn't look the small investor really has to study how it's being done. Like I said, I like to help them for free for 30 days. And then you see that they all make fools of you if you, if you listen to the media or, or to the... Have you ever seen... I think Mr. Buffett said that. He says, I've never seen a journalist who's a billionaire. But the journalist is the one who writes it. But he hardly makes a living. Don't take this personally, okay? <laughs> I mean, the writing press, right? The Wall Street Journal says, okay, but you know, those are not the richest people, but everybody says, oh, the Wall Street Journal says, so it's going to happen. No way. Dr. Charles Nenner, we appreciate the time you've given. I hope we can do this again soon, and uh, let's, let's pray for some peace and that the war cycle doesn't come and hit us too hard. Yeah, what can you do? They say, if there's a cycle, what can you do? So say the cycle says there's a winter and a summer and a winter. You can't change it, but you can buy a winter coat when you know the winter's coming. So that's what you should think of, what you should do. All right, Charles Nenner again. We appreciate the time and I uh, hope we can do this again soon. That was Dr. Charles Nenner sharing his views on gold and the economy. To learn more of Dr. Nenner's views, please visit his website, charlesnenner.com. If you like this interview, please do subscribe, share, and give us a thumbs up. All are greatly appreciated. Audio-only versions of this interview can be found on iTunes and Spotify.